Hi, welcome to Dreamcatcher. I'm your host, Robin Hardin. On today's program, you're going to find that for some people, sharing their dreams is a little overwhelming. One lady really had trouble just getting started. And then Elizabeth is going to share a testimony of how one of her interpretations came true. I'm going to share a little bit about my call to Africa, but first, I want you to meet a former skeptic. Hello, my name is Jesus Easter. I just uh, got a dream interpreted from Dreamcatchers by Robin Harden. And uh, to be honest, I did not believe in uh, dream interpretations. <laughs> I did not before then, um, but I did have a dream uh, that I asked from the Lord a couple months ago. And uh, I've been wanting to uh, get it interpreted for a very long time now. And um, it was very eye opening. It was, I'm very thankful that I went to her. That's awesome. And where did you see Miss Robin at? Uh, at Smash, actually. Tell us about Smash. Smash is an amazing ministry that I uh, got introduced months way back, and I really want to, uh, to be able to be a part of it now. Awesome. We're so glad that you're here, and we're so glad to hear your testimony about Dream Catchers. It was awesome. I want to introduce to you someone I met many years ago now, Patty. Patty, you have a dream that you want to share, and you had it last night, didn't you? I was a different person back when you met me. Yes. I used to be very, 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 very sad and very, because a long time ago I tried to kill myself, and I hated myself so much I felt, I felt worthless, and I felt there was nothing in my life that made me valuable, and I didn't understand really that I was God's child. But when I, when I started coming to church and, and talking to people, uh, I really, like, I can't do, wait, I can't do this. I can do it. You can. But do it, turn it off yourself. I used to come to your classes when you would do Bible classes and you would say, I used to be so shy. I used to be so shy. And then I see you out at Joseph's storehouse on the camera and I would see you dancing and stuff and I think, you know what, that, that's really something that's, I wish I could be like that. I know I have, I, I know that I feel in my heart I have a gift and I just don't know what it is and I don't know how to bring it out. But you know what, I kind of discovered through the years that God knows what he's doing. Yes. We, can, we can think that we're, we're failures. Mm -hmm. We can think that we have no use, but that you trust in him, he shows you a little at a time. He doesn't give it to you all at once, but a little at a time, this step, that step. And healing broken vessels has been one of the steps to help me. Mm -hmm. Because when I came down here and miss, met Miss Diantha, I thought, well, I had tried to take computer classes before. And because I have a paralyzed left hand, I'm slow. And I can't use both hands. And I took a class and they said, well, you, we're not going to allow you to graduate because you would spoil our percentage of people getting oh, jobs. Dear. So I felt that was another reason I felt bad about myself. So. Anyway, I came down here and asked my Miss Diantha, could I take your computer classes? And the computer classes have been more than computer classes. They've been love, because I've gotten love from Miss Diantha, I've gotten love from all the ladies, and I've learned how to give too. And it's given me confidence and it's given me peace. And I feel grateful now. And I had a disaster dream last night. I used to have them all the time because I felt so helpless in the world. Tornadoes coming from all directions and I'm supposed to be taking care of my little brothers and sisters or tidal waves. But I had one last night and I woke up this morning feeling crappy. I thought I can't go. And then I thought, no, that's just Satan trying to make me not go today. So that's what I did. I came today because I love it here and I love healing broken vessels. But my dreams, I don't let God, I don't let the devil push me around anymore. <laughs> Good I for don't. You. I don't. I don't because I know Good I recognize you. where it's coming mm -hmm. from. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's just it's just he's there mm -hmm. even when we don't know he's there. Yes, he is. Yes, and he and he and he's for us, and we yes. don't have to worry about the things that happen mm -hmm. day to day because he's there for us. We don't have to worry about when when things are going bad. Absolutely, he's there for us. And Patty, let me tell you. You, may, I don't even know if you knew you were going to be on camera I today. I did. I came here to Healing Broken Vessels to, to talk with Diantha, the founder who you've been referring to. Who I love. Who you love. <laughs> <laughs> and and then I kind of threw it on you. Hey, do you want to share a dream? But the devil knew 
that there was something special for you to do here today. And he tried to keep you home. Mm -hmm. That tornado, that keeping you up, making you tired. I'll just call in today. I won't go today. Because you're a volunteer. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be here. No, no. And he was trying to stop your testimony. Yeah. Your, your testimony is how we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And you just shared a testimony that people out there are hearing and seeing and you're changing lives because of it. And just because we have a dream that is a disaster dream that we're scared and there's this responsibility in that dream of taking care of your brothers and sisters and, and I need to stay home and I need to hide and I don't feel good. and you didn't listen to it. You knew that you could get through it. You knew that, get thee behind me, Satan. I'm going right, forward. Well, I say that a lot. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's, what, it's the word. You're mm -hmm. telling him the word. And because of that, look where you are. You're, you're touching lives. I'm full lives. up with love now. I am, I am full up with love now. And I used to be filled up with self-pity, mm. really, basically, because I felt like I've ruined my life. But, mm. you know, it doesn't matter what we feel. It's what God feels. God can show us, if we give our problems to Him, that He can take anything and turn around. The beauty for ashes, you know. Yes, yes. Uh, ro I don't know if it said roses or something, but it was. I remember in the Bible this beauty for ashes. Mm -hmm. And I see that now because everything that you go through can be a blessing to somebody else because you can help somebody else. And you, you are, know? you are. But that's why I love it here. I love it here because I encourage people. I'm slow. I have to think about things in a simple manner because I can't absorb knowledge quickly because of my, my stroke. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I teach slow too. And that's good for people that are slow learners <laughs> yes. like me. And it's good for older people because yes. I'm an older person now. You know, mm -hmm. I'm six, almost 60 years old. I find it hard to believe because I feel younger and happier now than I did at 20. So, what anyway. a testimony. Thank you so You're welcome. much. You're welcome. Thank, thank you for being here. Oh, thank you, sweetie. God bless you. God bless you, too. Don't go away. We'll be lots more. Was that good? Oh, my. Was that good? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Hey, Vanessa. Thanks for the dream. It's pretty long, so I'm going to read it to the viewing audience, and then I'm going to... Uh, interpret it for you. It's such a beautiful day, I thought I'd come out here and try it. Um, you said in the dream, a classmate, a former classmate of yours, and your sister, and you were all three together, and the two of them need a place to stay. So I'm assuming you're giving them a place to stay. You didn't say that in the email. Then you said that you're in a building, and you're trying to buy tickets to an event, and there's two different events, but two different ticket prices. One of the events, cost fifteen dollars a piece and you want to use your credit card for that event but when you get ready to use your credit card there's some kind of misunderstanding or someone's questioning your name on the card so then the other event is seventy dollar tickets and you want to spend your cash for those tickets while you're there counting the money out the man, I'm assuming the guy behind the counter, you didn't really make that clear, but a man there, you said you wanted him to help you count the money, and for whatever reason, he doesn't seem to be too helpful in wanting to help you count the money. Then there's a man, I don't think you know this person in real life, you said that you think you and he are a couple, and the two of you are taking Chris and another child to a live stage play. Now, I'm assuming Chris is your son or, or a young person in your life. And the way the email reads, I'm assuming this is your son. Then you're on a bus traveling somewhere. There's also a guy on the bus, but you don't know who it was and you didn't go into much detail there. You said your dad is maybe there, but if, he must be because the next sentence is that your dad asks Chris, which I'm assuming is your son, where his water bottle is. Your classmate's on this bus with you because her face is turned toward the window and she's just staring out the window uh, apparently for the whole time. You're sitting in the middle of your classmate who's looking out the window and your father who's in the aisle. And you're just talking about some youth being majorettes and how good they are. Um, I didn't get any in any feeling that this was really a significant part of the dream other than small talk, it's positive. 
Then you say that you have sisters in the dream and she took you to where she lived and she has a very nice house and she has all these very expensive, nice gifts, but she leaves you there. And then you and her fiance don't know where she is and you begin looking for her. And then at the end of this dream, which is very, um, it sounds like it goes all over the place. Uh, it doesn't seem to flow in one solid uh, string of events from, from what I can tell. You're cooking somewhere and there's a man there, you said a big tall man, and you're feeling a little uneasy because the way he's staring at you. And he says to you, I'm sorry that I keep looking at you, but you're so beautiful. And then you say, oh, well, thank you, and then you wake up. So this dream, I have to be honest, I, I really had to spend some time with the Holy Spirit because it, it, didn't, it didn't flow. And so I had to take each piece almost a line at a time. But this is, what I, this is what he showed me. I have mostly symbolisms for you, and so I'm hoping that you'll be able to put them together and make sense out of them. People, friends and family, are drawn to you for security. They're looking for a place to stay, and so they, they come to you for security. However, establishments, and maybe like the public, people, those people that don't know you question your identity. That's when you were trying to buy with your credit card. They question your credibility. They may question your, um, your integrity. The person who didn't want to help you count the money, that's showing that the people, these aren't people who know you. These are, you know, just people you meet in life. They aren't as ready to help you and to offer assistance. You took your son and another young boy, I'm assuming your son Chris and a young child, to a live event. And it was you and a man, and you said in the dream, you think this man may, you, the two of you may be a couple. This man can represent an angel or the Holy Spirit but he can also represent an actual man in your life. Either way, the Lord is showing you that you and either the Holy Spirit or you and a physical man will be taking your son and other children, his friends as well, that you're showing them life lessons. You're taking them to a live place. So you're living your life in front of them. You're, you're trying to expose them to people who live a life that you would want him to lead as well. Then you're on a bus, which is public transportation. It's also a ministry, a big ministry that goes from one place to the other. Um, this is your ministry, your life is very public. People see you. Lots of people see you. And because this is a bus and not a train, a bus makes lots of stops. Lots of very individual needs for individual people. And that's the kind of ministry the Lord is calling you to. It's very public. And it may feel all over the place. But you're going to be many different things to many different people. And that's important. Your dad will actually look to Chris for some of his spiritual uh, thirst. Remember, your father asked your son, where is his water bottle? Well, water is the Holy Spirit. And he's not going to look for Chris for the big, deep things, but he's watching Chris. And he's going to pick up on things that you've taught Chris, your father will be able to um, receive from as well. Um, your classmate is looking out the window on this bus, and apparently she never turns around. That's a, a feeling of longing, looking out the window and longing for something else. She's not, she's not involved in your conversation. She's kind of got her back to you guys. Um, so she's not as readily able to receive your word, the gospel from you as maybe some other people are, but she's there and she's listening and she does want more out of her life as she looks out the window. Um, you are the connection. You are the link between your father and your roommate because you're sitting between them. They don't seem to have any conversation going on, but you have conversation with the roommate and you have conversation with the father. So this is showing you how you, you are a real connector in, in relationships and with people and with people with the Holy Spirit, with the father. Then your half-sister shows up in the dream. And she takes you to her home, which is very nice, very nice gifts. These are material things. 
she seems to have everything from an outsider looking in, gifts and a beautiful home, but there's something deep down in that makes her unhappy because she's left. And she didn't leave telling you where she went, she didn't leave telling her fiance where she is. I'm not saying that she's going to leave her fiance, what I'm saying is that there's something in her, a longing, an unhappiness that he can't feel and you can't feel. And she, for whatever reason, doesn't feel comfortable talking to you about it. She left you guys there. So pray for her in that, in that aspect. All the material things in the world doesn't really make a person happy, and that's what the Lord is showing you. And then at the very end, you're cooking a meal somewhere. That's preparing food. And in dream language, that spiritual food, typically, you're preparing the word for someone. You're preparing to maybe minister in some fashion. And there's a man there that's watching you, and you're a little uncomfortable because you know he's looking at you in a way other than what he should be. And, and he realizes it. He apologizes. He said he's sorry, but you know, you're just so beautiful. This is something that's very important for you to learn, and this is important for people who are new in the ministry. I didn't recognize this myself for a long time, but when you're ministering, whether it's from the pulpit or one-on-one, -on -one, the Holy Spirit in you is such a, a precious um, draw. People are drawn to that. And remember when Moses went up to the mountain and he, had, he came back and he had the glory on his face? When we're ministering, when we're under that anointing, we can have that. And people watching us, especially the opposite sex, will look at us and see us in a way they're not used to seeing us. And they're drawn to the Holy Spirit in us. But if they're a non-believer especially, or a new believer, they don't know the difference in I'm drawn to the person or I'm drawn to the Holy Spirit. So it's important that you are able to discern the difference. Is this person interested in me or are they interested in the Holy Spirit that's in me? And because they may not be able to tell the difference, you especially need to be able to do that so you can help guide them. Uh, this happened to me very recently where I had to explain to someone that it was the Holy Spirit in me that, that was attracting them to me more so than it was me. So this is a very important um, message that will help you, especially as a single woman. Okay, thanks for the stream. I hope that it was uh, helpful because I know it was pretty disjointed, but um, if you have any questions, you know how to email me and we'll see what we can find out what the Father's saying to you. Hey there, I have something very exciting I want to share with you. The new Dreamcatcher Journal. It's geared to help you catch your dreams with over 50 scriptures, inspirational words and revelations, all pointing to dreams and dream interpretation. In the back, there's a quick reference that helps you with colors. Maybe you keep waking up at the same time or you have a favorite number that follows you. 44 different time scriptures, I call them, to help you find out what it is the Lord is saying to you straight from the Bible symbols that you can compare your dreams with and find the scripture that might help you interpret your dream in addition there's a hundred and ninety five different symbols from past dream interpretations that will help you to catch your dream order yours today I know it's easy for me to say, that's what people say, it's easy for me to tell you what your dreams mean. But unless they happen, unless the interpretation comes true, how do you know? This next viewer is someone who received an interpretation from me and then sometime later the interpretation happened and she's given me that feedback. I want to encourage you to do the same thing. Your dream is your testimony. Bless others with your testimony. Uh, we were before we came out to tape. We talked about um, a dream that I called you up about one time, and I happened to work at Amazon, and I was on a bus, and we took this bus with how you know a group of people went to the Murfreesboro Amazon, and I was part of the packing, and I'm not normally a packer. I'm a picker, which. You know, you gather the product together and you get it to a certain station and then it goes out on a truck. Well, um, 
today, that day, I was being a packer, and there was all these different small things, and I remember having trouble, uh, like there was five things in a row, and uh, it was all I could do to get three of them packed, and then um, my memory on the dream has to do with there was a storm, and uh, I was on the phone with someone, and reassuring them that I was okay and that God was in charge of the storm or certainly the outcome and um, and then but one of the packages that I finally was able to pack was a cassette size and had a really ornate dragon on the front and it did get packed and it got shipped down the line and um, I'm sorry, I'm a little fuzzy, but I think that, that the dream was pretty much over, or we got back in the bus and went back to uh, the Lebanon <coughs> uh, Amazon. And uh, that's, I think that's it. I remember what, what we so, decided it was. So then, uh, some of the things you told me at the time had to do with the... Um, you know, like I was telling the person on the phone, yes, God is in charge. He knows what's happening. He's in charge of what's going to happen in my life at my work. Uh, my work is my mission field or my ministry. Uh, just being myself. I, I could smile about a bunch of stuff just being, doing, being myself. And... Um, that the dragon, of course, represents the enemy, but if we all remember, it was just the size of a cassette, and and uh, whatever problem I was going to have was going to be a small one. It wasn't going to be anything I should worry about terribly, and I'm not supposed to worry anyway, and, and God would be in charge of that. Well, there is a co-worker at work who has a little bit of authority that I should worry, you know, I should be concerned about. She's above me. And um, she was being herself. <laughs> I'm myself and she's herself. Well, part of herself is um, something that, you know, well, she's she's got it in for me. It comes across to everybody's mind. And especially if they're not, if they're not doing something that they really like doing, and she's put them there, and and yet, you know, I am loving her in a way that is just me, and I walk up and I treat her with respect, and um, and the small thing has gone away. Walking, talking, debating, and arguing with God is a lighthearted collection of short stories depicting some of Robin's real-life experiences and testimonies. The three-book series is now available at Amazon.com. I've heard some of you say that you would love to have me come and speak at your group, but you feel like maybe your group's not large enough. But what's coming up is a clip from a ministry that I did right here locally with a very small handful of people. And you're going to see how they were blessed. And I would like to do the same with you. God is speaking to all of us in dreams. And I want to help you to find out what He is. He's saying, watch this next clip. 97, I think it was, I had a series of strokes. And my whole right side of my body was paralyzed. I couldn't talk. I was talking half, you know, the half of my mouth and I couldn't. I couldn't straighten up, and my, <coughs> my life's desire was to go to Africa. When I was 12 years old, you all would really appreciate this, when I was 12, I used to pretend like I was black. <laughs> so my, this is something that's been in my heart for a long time. I didn't, I, we were raised in the country, and I didn't even have, I didn't know a black family. I had never met black families. And yet my heart cried for Africa. And one day I told someone, I didn't know how to express it other than I was homesick for a place I had never been. Mm. Even then. Even then. And 12 years old. And so fast forward till I was in my 40-somethings and I'm having this stroke. And I'm thinking, Lord, you've told me I'm going to Africa.
So I've learned sign language so I can talk to deaf people and I'm, I'm practicing it with my left hand because I'm thinking, I'm, this side might be dead, but I still got half of this body. And I'm thinking, how am I going to go to Africa? Am I going to be in a wheelchair? Am I going to, is someone going to, how am I, how is this physically going to work? Well, we finally get to the doctor and my doctor says to me, Robin, you could have died. Why didn't you call me sooner? And I said, oh no, I couldn't have died. <laughs> and she said, I said, because I'm going to Africa. And she said, Robin, you're the doctor. <laughs> she says, you're not the doctor. You don't know this. I said, God told me that I was going to Africa. I might go with half of my body not working, but I'm going to Africa. So I know I couldn't die. And so once I went to Africa, then you're like, oh my goodness, you know, <laughs> these really are the <laughs> yeah. But it doesn't really work that way. God, once you do the thing that you're called to do, there's something else. And yes. let me tell yes. you, especially as, as African American heritage that you ladies have, mm -hmm. I can't imagine what it would be like for you. But when I went to Africa, I was in Uganda, mm -hmm. and we're on the side of a mountain, and the storm clouds have moved, and I'm just, and it's just, it's the most beautiful country. And I'm looking out, and it's just, it's just like, oh dear, I'm really in Africa. After 40 years, it took me 40 years to get there. And, and all these beautiful ladies are dancing around me in their African garb. And I just became overwhelmed. And I'm, I'm, I'm on the ground snotting and crying and, <laughs> you know. And I get up and I just, and I realized this is what I was created to do. This was it. And all of us have that. All of us have something that we were created to do. And I don't want the devil to stop any of us from doing that. And he'll tell you, you're too old, you're too young, you're too fat, you're too skinny, you're too poor, you're too... I didn't have the money to go. I didn't have... I didn't know anyone who went. was going. <laughs> I mean, all the list of why yes. you can't do it, he told me. And yet, whatever God has for you, he will yes, make a I'm way for that to happen. You. It will find you. Yes, you just can't give it up. And I waited 40 years for that. But the devil did everything, including trying to oh, well. stop my body from going. Mm -hmm. But I, I, just, I say that to say, you don't have to have money. You don't have to have education. Oh yeah, I, I'm a country girl from Appalachia. I mean, in the summer we were barefooted because we couldn't afford shoes. I mean, we were, we were poor, just country poor, not, not city poor, but we were poor little country kids and to think that I would be in Africa one day. And I say that to encourage you because whatever it is the Lord has for you, it doesn't matter what man has said to you. What has God said to you? That's, That's the right. important thing. Are you looking for a speaker for your next retreat or event? Robin's transparent style comforts and soothes during personal ministry and dream interpretation. Right now, this lady right here walks deeply with God. She's full of the Holy Spirit and she has studied the Word and her gift is the real deal. She has encouraged thousands around the globe by helping them find peace through understanding. You probably know someone who always gives mixed messages. Next week, one of our dreams is about that very thing. It's about people saying one thing, doing another, telling their children one thing, expecting another. We're gonna share some viewer mail, but very important, I want you to see that one of my dream catchers receives the interpretation of their dream while they're dreaming. <laughs> 